Coming up is junior Maddie Giles from Blue Springs, Missouri. Actually, I think it's technically Lee Summit. We'll ask her about that here in just a little bit. Uh, speaking of softball, uh, softball is needed up or down? Up a little bit? Okay, Maddie can't hear me. I want you. Is that good? Okay, well, you're yeah, kind of you're dominating things here to begin with. So, <laughs> hey, uh, softball has been canceled for tomorrow. Let's talk about that first, Maddie. Uh, no game tomorrow. You find out what few an hour ago. So, how does your routine change? <laughs> Um, it doesn't change that much. Coach told us after practice that he thought it would be best to just, just delay the games because of the weather. And it just kind of, some of us girls joked, we're like, we're going to class. We have the test tomorrow, and I have a quiz, <laughs> so I better start studying. Well, let's talk about the Lee Summit versus Blue Springs thing. You uh, went to Blue Springs South High School, but grew up in Lee Summit. Is that There's a line there somewhere. There is a line. It, it's kind of funny because the neighborhood I grew up in is in Lee Summit, Missouri. And it's pretty big, and half of the neighborhood goes to Blue Springs, so the Blue Springs School District, and the other half goes to Lee Summit School District. I don't know why they did it, yeah, but... Yeah, it's really random, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I am closer to Lee Summit North High School, Blue Springs, and maybe even Lee Summit than Blue right? Springs South. Yeah. So wow. I definitely had about a 15, 20-minute drive to school. Um, I never sped, though, so... No, ne you would never, never do that. <laughs> never left late to school, never sped. It was fine. Well, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. First, oh, I, I know what I was going to ask you, and I've been waiting all week to do this. Jaguar, Jaguar, what is it at Blue Spring South? I'm a Jaguar. So, wire. Jaguar. Jaguar, yes. Okay, yes, great. sir. Okay, well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Two-time uh, All-GLVC performer as a freshman and as a sophomore. Two-time academic All-GLVC. Five times on the Dean's List and a caller, uh, Cardinal Scholar Athlete. That means you're really good in athletics and you're really smart, right? Uh, sure. You have to, you can't be modest here. You've got to tell the truth. I think the biggest thing for me is student become, comes before athlete, so I'm a student athlete, so I'm a student first. And my parents have always pushed me from a young age to just work hard, and I guess I've, I've just really tried to work hard my first two years here and just continue to do it my third year. Well, I want to break down all of that. Student athlete like you're talking about. Yes, your, sir. Your, your studies are going to lead you where? I want to go into accounting. I want to be an auditor. Uh, potentially, I would like to go into the public accounting sector for a few years and then work back into maybe being a professor one day. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Now, I've never heard you say that before. I've heard the other part. Uh, how is it possible? How do you do all of the things you have to do for athletics, do the things in your social life, and get these great grades? How do you do it? Well, I would say I have a passion planner, and it's just a planner, and I am very... You call it a passion planner? That's what it's called. It's a okay. passion planner. Again, it's, it's never the heard brand. That. Oh, okay. It's a brand, and I have just outlined as much as I can of what I have going on. Pencil is always softball because it could, you know, depending on weather, it could change. And um, I have just the list of what I need to do every day, and my parents are just the biggest support system of to relax, to have fun, and not always worry too much because I tend to do that. Yeah, I was going to say, do you worry about uh, things? Not get... worry. I just become sometimes stressed about, sure. you know, getting good grades and being able to do everything I want to do. And up until this point, I have, so I really need to stop being stressed. Well, you know, it, it's interesting, but through my 11 years when I interview athletes, the number one thing they say that gives them a chance to be successful is time management. You're talking about time management. Oh, right? absolutely. Time, time management is something huge that... I think people learn at different stages in life, and in high school I was very busy as well, and I think that has actually helped me prepare for college, because in high school I did a lot of activities as well, um, and I also was a student, and I also played softball, right. and I just kind of carried that forward, and one of the reasons why I chose to come to William Jewell College was because I wanted to have the full experience of college. And I think that's just what's occurring now as a junior. Maddie Giles is our guest. You have full experience of college. I love that phrase. That's really good. And, and because you're involved in so many things, we've talked about studies. We've talked about, obviously, softball. What else are you involved in at Jewel? Well, I'm a prior leadership fellow. I also am a Cardinal host, and I am the co-editor of the Jewel business today. I did not know that. Yes. And I'm involved in some honor societies on campus, and I am in Delta Zeta. 
What is the uh, host part? What is that? The Cardinal hosts. So there's Cardinal Blazers and Cardinal hosts at Jewel. Okay. Cardinal Blazers are the ones that give tours to incoming, you know, potential freshmen and potential students. Sure. While the Cardinal hosts are the ones who uh, speak with the alumni. And we do commencement. We do... We pretty much are the people who talk to the alumni and the trustees a lot. Right. And it's been a great experience. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. I have made a lot of relationships with the trustees that I would not have made if I was not a Cardinal host. And I just can't see being a William Jewell student without being a Cardinal host. I think that's great, Andy. I think Jewell does give you the opportunity as a smaller school to Absolutely. do so many things. You remember the first time we ever met or talked? Do you recall where this was? Oh, you might have to remind me. Well, we uh, hosted the Down Syndrome Dance. Okay, and you yes. came, you came down, and you were so great with those Down syndrome kids. And you have a, I, you know, a real special feeling for people of all kinds. I'm, I'm probably embarrassing you a little bit, but this is how I feel. Uh, I just don't see you locked up in a cubicle being an accountant all day. <laughs> I think that a professorship might be something that you'd be very good at. You're not the first one to tell me that. Yeah. Uh, I see accounting as something that. Well, I guess to start, I love numbers. I, that's what makes sense to me. English, ooh, that's not my thing. But yeah. numbers and math, that has always come very natural to me. And I see accounting as working with individuals who might not understand numbers as well. And I want to be an auditor. I want to go out there and I want to work with companies and I want to look at their numbers and tell them, hey, there, here's a little rebuttal, here's a transposition, so on and so forth. So I think I see accounting as working with people every day to maybe make sense of something that is confusing to them. Well, you are fascinating, and there's so much in there I'd like to dive into, but because our time is a little short, I do want to talk about softball, and since you like numbers, throw some numbers at you here. I I think I read today that uh, your freshman year, you started 44 of 51, 52 games. Last year, you started all 52, but as a center fielder. Let's talk about the difference between playing left and center. Angles. I guess we're going into geometry Okay, which we are. I have always seen outfield as something as... You do your job when it comes to you, and it's all about communication. And so the one difference, I guess, if you go from left field to center field is maybe you're seeing the ball differently, but you're also just communicating with the other outfielders and making sure that you are all on the same page. In your system, playing center field, are you the boss out there? Do you get everything you can take? I think it's more of a a team still. So I don't think I take everything. If I don't hear someone say something and I have an opportunity to go get it, I'm going for it. What about coming into the infield? Do you call off those infielders a lot? I, not always. Not always. It depends how far we're back. So if we're playing, you know, if it's a big, if it's a power hitter, then we're playing back. I probably won't call them off as much. And I think that's the same for both the left field and right field side as well. But if we are closer and I do have the opportunity to get it, it is easier for me in my mind because I'm going forward while the infielders are going backwards. Gotcha. Right. Maddie Giles, our guest, talking about outfield play. Now let's talk about hitting a little bit. It seems to me, and I thought about this when I watched you play the other day, that you're not slapping as much. Do you slap a lot the first couple years have you given that up or am I thinking wrong I did slap in high school I have not slapped since I've been here okay I think I'm a little slower now (laughs) I've gotten a little older and (laughs) I enjoy power hitting not power I guess base hitting and I have always had people think that I'm a slapper and when I stand still they're like oh okay yeah maybe that's it and plus you're hitting from the left side of the plate which uh which helps power hitting though you've hit a home run this year where was that that was at Bellarmine. At Bellarmine. It was not happen that often. Yeah. I, my goal is always to just get on base and move runners and help the team out as best as I can. Yeah. Our park is small. A lot of balls fly out of our park. Yes. Does that make it more fun for you or less fun for you? Would you Would you rather play in a bigger field where you could chase the ball a little bit longer? I think it's fun to see our, our hitters hit home <laughs> runs. A great answer. So I do love to be at home. And it's just awesome. also awesome to have a home crowd. Yeah, it is. And to have. So I would rather be home and have our home crowd and cheer on our bigger hitters and when they hit home runs. Well, Maddie, you can see Maddie this weekend, we hope, with the rain, if it'll stay away against Maryville and uh, the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Noon starts Saturday and Sunday are scheduled uh, at our place. Hey, the, the, the changes in our facility, the new locker room, the the. the the walls and everything. Great facility now. Oh, it's amazing. You guys love the team room? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. We were joking today, actually. We were standing and 
Brooke Bernard and I were like, where were our old loggers? This was so small because it was underneath the press box. And now right. we're like, oh my goodness, we have so much room. We don't have to knock into each other when we're, you know, changing in and out of uniforms or just, we can just hang out in yeah. our team room. Yeah. How is the chemistry on your team? It's, a, it's really good. We... We have a young team, and so I think we're constantly learning about each other and just growing through it, and we just enjoy having fun with each other and joking around, and that's one thing that I definitely think is awesome about our team. Only one senior on your team. You're a junior along with several others. You guys kind of step up a little earlier to be leaders? Um, I guess so. I think everyone just saw, you know, we have a lot of incoming freshmen, and uh, we don't have any transfers this year. So yeah. a lot of incoming freshmen, and we just need to do our part to make sure that we are all equals and they feel at home within our program. Well, you're a delightful person, and uh, whether you never play another game of softball or not, it's a pleasure to know you. And I know you're going to be great when you get out of school, and uh, I can't wait to see the rest of your uh, year and a half of softball left. And it'll be a good finish for you guys if you ever get out again. Yes. 40 days and 40 nights of rain, not conducive to playing softball. No, it's definitely not. So I'm praying yeah. to the softball gods that they push, push those weather clouds away. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you're, you so much for having me. You're the me. best. Maddie Giles, uh, our guest here.